Here's a story from the Daily Mail. Sickening footage released by Hamas shows terrorists holding Israeli toddlers and children during Saturday's massacre, which shocked the world. Sickening footage released by Hamas today allegedly shows a terrorist holding Israeli toddlers. The video shows Hamas members holding the youngsters as they sit around a table. One is seeing rocking a prom as an infant cries. Others are carrying the distressed children, rocking them and patting their backs. The footage was recorded during uh, during as Hamas gunmen carried out their mass infiltration of Israel last Saturday, according to Israeli newspaper, the Jerusalem Post. The attack saw Hamas prescribed as a terrorist organization by the EU and the U.S. burst through the heavily militarized border around the Gaza Strip, this we all know, took an estimated 150 Israeli foreign and dual nationals, uh, national hostages back to Gaza during its initial attack. Hamas said on Friday that 13 of them had been killed in Israeli airstrikes. It has previously said four hostages died in the bombardments. So you can see here they have images of them taking the children. Now, I suppose the, the claim they're trying to make is that they didn't kill the kids. There's also videos where Hamas fighters are indiscriminately firing into porta potties. So this is all propaganda from a group that is out of control, sadistic, targeting civilians. If, if one if one Hamas guy or Palestinian activist comes out and says that they believe in peace, it doesn't matter. Because clearly there is no unified message as to what they're doing. They're going and indiscriminately just killing and capturing civilians. And we know they use them as bargaining chips. So here we are again in this uh, in the circumstance. And, and I, the craziest thing is right now on the left, the only thing they're saying is Israel's killing babies. This is it, it, it is this is the nightmare scenario of war. But I got to be completely honest. They will make the, the left makes the argument that Israel started it when quite literally Hamas broke the barriers down and went and started targeting civilians. So, you know, you want to take this back thousands of years, fine, so be it. But Hamas is targeting civilians and children. Israel targeting militarized sites or whatever is not the same thing, though we are all distressed when civilians die. That's that's a no brainer. I mean, what the defenders of Hamas in this country and the West are doing is they are trying to dispute a wholesale truth by making sort of retail objections. And what I mean by that is they'll say this particular image is distorted or this is not a valid video as if to say that and, and maybe they're right because we're in an age where there's so much fog of war. There's so much confusion about whether this video was digitally altered, sometimes <coughs> difficult for you or I to know. But the implication is that if the video is invalid, kids are not being threatened by Hamas. And, and I think we shouldn't lose sight of that bigger truth. Sort of that, that, video, that picture of the burned baby that uh, Ben Shapiro posted yesterday. And then the AI machine said, hey, it's actually fake. And it's like, yo, maybe it's real. Maybe it's fake. It's, it's it real. doesn't matter. It's, it, so, it so, is real apparently now. But real. who knows if that's even true. But it, ultimately, it doesn't matter because they did kill babies and right. very likely burned them alive. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. matter if that picture is real or fake. These, these these videos of Hamas storming these houses, and then you can see one guy lighting a house on fire. Yo, they're not checking the bedrooms to make sure innocent people aren't dying. They're opening fire on closed porta potties with people in them, and, and they don't care. And I should say, I, it's very very self righteous of me to say that they are. I, it seems as if they are from reports that I've read that they were indiscriminately murdering old women people. Bro, there's there's videos. Like, look. I just watched a video where they're walking through the music festival and there's a row of porta potties and it's go pop, pop, pop. Like, come on, man. There could be kids in there. There could be women. When we see them in one video waiting at the gate of a kibbutz and then a car pulls up, they wait for the gate to open, run up and execute the people inside the car. They're not checking to see if that's an elderly woman or not. They're just opening fire on the car and then running in. They're not checking to see if there's people in the room. They walk into the house and then start setting things on fire. There's a so when we see photos that are being published that don't show the bodies, they show blood and they show you know gore and stuff like that. I really don't think that the Israel government is manufacturing scenes when we can see the videos, and we know that even journalists of a more pro Palestine bent are saying, yeah, they target civilians. It's one of their tactics. I bet. There's videos of them holding yeah. children. Yeah. Like, My guess is that civilians are making fake content. Governments are making fake content on all sides, but that also there's lots of real content as well. And it's terrifying me because like, so I was the, saying earlier, I, I tweeted out, I want to go look at the most gruesome stuff. Where is it? I want to see it. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, I don't, I don't want to get tricked into seeing gruesome stuff from two years ago or things that like fake gruesome, gruesome stuff that makes me crazy. So I don't even know if I want to look at any of it now. But so I the, don't want to not know what's going on. So the, the big controversy the other day, which 
everybody get mad about gets mad about you've got the 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 you know very pro israeli side anger that anyone would dare question the authenticity of this photo posted by israel you've got people on the left arguing that it's not real and if you're saying it is oh no you're posting fake nonsense i don't care about that i care about actually investigating the story and figuring out who's lying now what had happened was we i did an ai or not analysis on the photo that was posted by the israeli prime minister and ben shapiro had posted the same image and it said it was ai i then put in an ai generated image in it said it was ai i then put in a graphic designed by humans it said it was made by humans we i then put in a photograph of john fetterman that we got from a news story we used for a thumbnail and it said it was a real it was a human generated photo so it was accurate i don't know if the the photo of the baby in this regard was uh, or I, sh- I should say definitively right now it was inaccurate as it pertained to that the, the charred remains of that of that baby uh there has been a much deeper analysis where they actually posted the forensic analysis of the image and the manip- other manipulations that were made to it it appears to be beyond a reasonable doubt the photo is real it is a is a real photo of a real doctor showing the remains and uh it's it's kind of horrifying that this this is what happens first it's horrifying that people are like i demand to see the photo to prove it and that's that's sad and that's horrifying. At first, they're like, look, for privacy reasons, we, we don't want to have to show these things. But people demand the proof. So it gets posted. And then what happens is propagandists and people trying to, to I guess, win, a, win, a, win an information war, then claim it's all fake. And then finally, we get a bunch of different AI forensic analysis. One of the things they did was there's some tools where it shows you uh, uh, like pixel patterns and like things like that that you can't see with your own eyes right but when you run it through some several filters you can clearly see lines where ai is generated the original image doesn't appear to be fake and then there are faked versions of it that are clearly fake so i I would just say at this point who knows i believe to the best of our abilities it's it's a legit photo and this is stuff's horrifying but again i don't i don't think we need at this point when there's videos of hamas laughing holding the kids they're I mean, clearly the, talking the, the terrorist mo has not changed if you go back to the um 70s when you had the ira and you had the you know the um, incident at entebbe and so on the the idea of taking hostages the idea of exploiting the other side's reverence for human life i mean think about it they know that the israelis care about human life if the israelis really didn't care the hostages would be meaningless the right. reason that they grab your kid as a hostage is they know that you're going to go, okay, you know, I'm going to... Ho- so so it reminds me a little bit how, how in this country, you know, they use the accusation of racism. I'm not... Think of this about, just by, by way of analogy. When somebody comes to you and says, you're a racist, their hidden assumption is that you're not a racist. Because if you are really a racist, you'd be like, thank you very much. This is awesome. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's like someone coming to me going, right. Dinesh, you're Indian. I'd be like, yeah, sure. But they want you to go, no, I'm not. So the fact that you go, no, I'm not, is you don't believe you are and you don't want to think of yourself as a racist. So the charge of racism only works on anti-racists. Not anti-racist, though. They, it, they, they've come to that phrase, anti-racist to them. It actually. works on people who are not racist. Exactly. Yeah, because it, because it hits them where it hurts. If, if someone right. was genuinely racist and proud of it, it would not hurt at all. But you they see, would take it as a compliment. This is a, this is, this is a very clever game they play. They've tra- they, t- they took the phrase anti-racist. Because people assume it means you oppose racism. It doesn't. Anti-racist means you're quite literally racist, but in a different way. That's a good point. They've, that's right. This, this appropriation of vocabulary, and the left is really good at this. I mean, the resistance, you know, the, uh, even the language of decolonization. I mean, decolonization yeah. is a good idea, right? I mean, I'm from India. India was a colony of the British, if you say decolonization. But over the years, the Indians have sort of reassessed because they've now realized, yeah, there were some bad things from the British, but guess what? You know, we still wear suits. We still have British laws. We still have parliamentary systems of government. We got a lot of things from the British. So, uh, but, but nevertheless, this, this trope of anti-colonialism is driving this whole narrative. That's what makes the Palestinians into heroes and the Israelis into villains. How bloody was the uh, Indian revolution, if it was even considered a revolution against the British when they seized control? It was one of the unbloodiest revolutions of all because Gandhi recognized that the Indians were they outnumbered the british were ruling india with a very small contingent of people and so gandhi realized listen all we need to do is sort of 
paralyze the country with nonviolent demonstrations, and it'll be too difficult for the British to kind of manage this Indian elephant. And so the British sort of essentially let it go. And uh, But again, the, the only reason the Indians could pull that off is because the British were not Hitler. I mean, if the British were Hitler, Gandhi would be, you know, a lampshade. God, literally. But the, the Indians could count on the fact that they could go lie down on the tracks, the railway tracks, and all the British trains would go, they grind to a halt. <laughs> wow. Because again, the British are not willing to run over Indian kids. Yeah. Uh, and so that ultimate, the British, their own morality was the undoing of the empire. Wow. And I think we're seeing that very, in the United States, elements of the, the liberals and the left that are anti-America and hate this country. There's a video right now going around of someone on, I think it's on Fox, and I'm not sure, where they're asking a person at this one of these protests in New York supporting Hamas, saying, you know, do you believe America should take care of itself first? I'm like, absolutely not. And it's like, okay, well, when you have a, a large faction of Americans, maybe half the country, who are like, America last. Okay, well, you've got problems with pipes in Flint or Newark or whatever, insert country, but you want to send our money overseas first? This country will not survive that. It's like you're, 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 it's, you're, you're giving away your money to your neighbors before paying your rent. Eventually you get evicted. Yeah. Sooner or later. Sooner I mean, one later. of the things I found and then going back to my just experience growing up was that India had these wars with Pakistan. And I noticed that while those wars were going on, every Indian was on the Indian side for the exact same reason that every Indian backs the Indian side in the cricket match, you know, nationalism, India first is taken for granted. Nobody even debates it. It's not like you have to discuss, is it a good idea to be India first? I mean, no Indian would even know what that means. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and yet, when I came to the United States, suddenly I realized, and this is in some way a legacy of the Vietnam War, suddenly I realized a lot of Americans actually are not on the American side. They actually want the Vietnamese to win. They are America last, and they see America as a villainous force in the world, even though... America has been a very benign force in the world. Any other country that had this kind of power that the U.S. has had since World War II would have used it far more tyrannically. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's almost like a tell when you, when someone says that the U.S. is like the most racist country in the world. I hear that all the time. Like, <laughs> you have not traveled anywhere. Quite literally friend. like the least racist literally, country Literally, literally. Like even, I bring this up when I went to Sweden. They try to claim they're very progressive, but they're super racist. Yeah. They're like, we, 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 we scuttle all the poor people into these ghettos and then tell everyone how, how awesome we are, but then we only hire white natives. And in the United States, you've got white liberals without group preference. And there was a story that came out that found, I think over the past several years, something like 90 plus percent of mid to high level jobs were all given to non-white individuals because of the DEI push. So it's like, that's clearly racist and uh, in violation of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. But here we are. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.